In this video, we're going to go over actually uploading our CSV file so that we can actually process it. If you've looked at episode 35, which I'll link to in the show notes, it goes over how to upload files. To start off this project, I've actually literally copied and pasted some of the code to give us a starting point for this particular piece where we're going to upload a CSV file and actually create some new users in our database. First of all, go ahead and just run our project. You can see we have data file and we have our upload thing at a slash upload URL. If we look at our CSV file, you can see we have users. We have username for our header and email for our second column. Then we have user one, two, three, four, five, and six, along with email addresses. What our intention is to upload this file using the form that we created. And then once the file is uploaded, we're actually going to go ahead and process it and create new users in our database. We're then gonna follow that up by restricting our file uploads to be CSV files. The method you're gonna see is not the only way to do things, it's just a way to do it and you can customize it as you need it but it is a fairly basic way to get you started and get you down the path that you need to go to be able to upload and process CSV files. First thing we'll do is if we'll open up our forms.py you see we have a traditional data form that inherits from form and then we have our file field of data file. This is really all we need for the actual upload portion. What we actually need to do though to actually process our file is we need to capture it and do stuff with it. To that end, when I'm dealing with uploading files and I have to do some post-processing once the file is uploaded, I like to create a method called process data. This is just a pattern I use, and I don't know if anyone else uses it, it just helps me with my code organization so I don't have really big views. I can just offload that code into the form since it's gonna be the same everywhere. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our file. Normally when you deal with Python and you do files, you do f equals open. In this case, we're gonna do f equals, then we're gonna do self.clean data and data file for our dictionary, and we're gonna pull back the file itself. Here's where things get a little bit tricky. Here we're returning a file, but it's not actually a file object in the traditional sense. We actually have to do some processing on it because what we're getting back are bytes instead of strings that we might be used to. If we did something like open and then we did a read file with an R, R plus, or RB. So to convert this, we're gonna use a thing called the text IO wrapper in our IO library, in our standard library. And I also wanna point out that this is more of a Python 3 thing and dealing with Python 2, you'll end up writing a little bit different code in order to get this to work. This might work in Python 2, I haven't actually tried it. But if we'll do io.textio wrapper and we'll wrap our file that we've created here, it actually converts it to a string that we can then process accordingly with our CSV reader and specifically our dict reader that we used earlier. So that that file is wrapped, we just do our reader equals csv.dictreader, pass it f for our file, and then now we just loop through our reader with for user in reader, and then just do user.objects, create user, and then pass it in our username for our first argument, and then email equals our user email for our second one. And you notice we're using the dictionary username and email. So with that, that's all that we really need in our process data for it to take the file that we've uploaded, pass it into a CSV reader and then process everything accordingly. The next thing that we need to do is we need to open up our view, specifically our form view. So we go to our views file and go to our data view. And then in our form valid method, we're just gonna do form.processData. And then that'll actually execute the code that we just wrote. And notice how it keeps a view actually fairly slim and lets us deal with our uploaded data. So we'll go ahead and open up our browser. We'll first look in our admin and see that we have a single user. If we'll go back to our upload and we'll click browse, select our user data.csv, and then we'll submit to upload it. You see it gets uploaded and then redirects back to the upload page. If we go back to our admin, look at our users, you'll see we have our user one through six along with our original user. That's really all there is to processing our CSV file. There's actually not a lot to it once you understand how to do it and how it works. The final thing we're gonna do is actually go ahead and limit the types of files that can be uploaded. You don't necessarily want somebody to upload a .doc and then you try to process it like a CSV file. The code that we're gonna use is very basic and there are a lot of ways to do this checking. This is just a naive way to start your check and you can build this out to be much more complex and you can use third-party libraries that do much better file detection than what we're gonna use. I'm gonna open up our form again and we're going to create a new method called clean underscore data underscore file. If you're familiar 
familiar with forms, and it's basically going to be called because we have a data file field, and we're calling the clean method for that data file. It's actually going to run to validate that this file is actually a CSV file. Our first line is going to be our f equals our clean data, and we're just going to actually use the file so we have a file field object that we can actually get information from. If it's populated, then we're going to get the extension of the file with f named us split. We're going to split it on the dot, and then use negative one to get the last element on that list. Then we're going to check if the extension is not equal to CSV. We're going to raise a validation error and tell the system the file is not supported. And then finally, we're just going to return F. So super simple, and this just gets us enough to get started for detecting CSV files. If we go ahead and open up in our browser, and we try to upload a data.txt file, we get a file type not supported error that we just raised in our code. That's all there is to uploading a file and then processing it accordingly, and then creating all of our new users that we need to create, and then also how to restrict our file types that we upload. So with that, go ahead and and join us next time where we review how to download bits of data into a CSV file. Have a great day and see you next time.